Now, Mr. Nightingale has a brisk blood sample. Ooh, we should take that. Now, that's useful. A music box. We should take that. And vampire factions and skulls. We should take that also. Thank you. Thank you. So, we've got some new bits and bobs. So, let's have a quick look at what we just acquired, shall we? We have acquired a music box with a note inside. By a, a letter from Jack f to uh, from Enid. I write this letter as long as I have the strength and the will, not that I have something to hide or fear, except perhaps to forget what I want to tell you. I always knew you would become someone important, someone good and nice. I knew it was since you were a child. When you preferred to read books rather than going to play outside, I knew it when you helped me carry groceries before you went to school and cleaned the house after you came back. I'm proud of you, my son. Not only because I'm your mother, but also because you deal so well with everything around you. I'm sorry I have recently become such a burden to you. Never forget I love you. I hope you'll never forget you love me. Oh. And the other one was, uh, it was actually a lore thing, wasn't it? Of vampires and skulls. Which I don't know where that is. That one. So I'm not going to read this one, but if you want to read it, do feel free. Uh, just pause it and have a quick nosy. Right, so I'm actually going to have another quick word with e Enid. Because there's a... There's a Oh, uh, you did, sir. You did. You gave me two things that struck my fancy. It was actually a pretty good deal. Oh, Enid, you got a headache. Oh, well, well, we'll fix that as well. But we'll quickly loot this place. Sorry, I was actually planning to continue with the main quest, but it's just that the side characters are actually quite interesting on their own. Somebody compared this a little bit to uh, Deadly Premonition. I wouldn't go quite that far in the sense that uh, I'd say Deadly Premonition side characters are incredibly, incredibly lovable and cool, but uh, it's certainly a, uh, certainly a very, very nice selection of them, that's for sure. Right, we'll have a look on the other side as well, just in case there's something in here. <laughs> Looks like a bar. Like an old pub, maybe? Or a gambling house? Before the epidemic, this looks like a place of, uh, place of fun. Or the very least, uh... Ooh, Jesus, that is a very dead person in here. Holy crap. Well... That'd be a that'd be a bummer for whoever moves in here, that's for sure. Well That lady's very dead. Well, lots and lots of shillings to loot, but no uh, no reasoning or who this person is. A bit sad. And the skull in the bin. Uh, we're not actually interested in killing a skull right now, so we want to go quickly go back see Enid. Then we'll go see Rodney down in the sewers. And once we've done that, we'll go and see. We'll go hand the quest in with uh, with Tom for his bottles, shall we? Anyway, Enid, you need to let me. Ooh, oops, oops, need to let me in. Good evening, Miss Gilliman. May I come in? Of course, uh, of course. Thank you, Doctor Tibbet. Right. Let's quickly talk to her about that letter we found. So, Doctor Tibbet. Let's see. Tell me, Enid, why do you feel guilty about your son? I know I'm a burden to my Jack. I know my mind and my thoughts are drifting away. I'm so sorry. I can't help it. This is not your doing, Miss Gillingham. You do not have to apologize for your condition. Of course I don't, Doctor. I've done nothing wrong, I swear it. What exactly are we talking about here? Oh, it's so sad. Ugh. All my relatives got like this. It's, it's just really, uh... Goodbye, Miss Gillingham. It's just genuinely really unfortunate. I, I kind of wish we could, you know, send us to the hospital to get looked after, really. I wish that was an option, but never mind. Right. So, we're going to go through the night shelters uh, area and, um, and go that way. Saying that, is there any guards of prone around? I'm pretty sure there would be. So I'm wondering if any one of those has got the, um... Oh, it's Ichiobod. You right down there? Good evening, Mr. Throgmorton. Dr. Reed. Oh, you're just sitting down, I guess. All right, to make sure he's all right. A vampire kid. I'm wondering if any of these guards um, are the ones that. If there's any guards around here, I wonder if any of the ones there who uh, stolen thingy's money. I'm sorry, Blinker Skull. I need. Oh, wait. I need you uh, to be knocked out. I can eat you. I'm really low, running low on blood. There we go. Thanks. Boop. Right. I don't know if there's many guards around there is. Oh, I didn't go cure Enid. Ah, oh, she has a headache. I meant to do that. Oh, uh, we've been in here, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Right. Excuse me, sirs. Get out, 
Any one of you, uh, oh, hello. Any one of you guys, uh, stolen money? I really don't know what to do with that side, guys. I've never seen that one before. I'm not really that fast. It's just you're slow. Uh, probably not so lucky, I'd imagine, but, uh... No, no such luck. All right, well, I'll I'll probably have to look that one up to see where we where we even get started on one. I won't look the solution up. But I need to look. Or maybe I can ask her about it. Maybe she'll be able to tell me. It's locked. In fact, are they inside? Perhaps. Ah, oh, that's just so. Maybe you can tell me more about the uh, people who stole your thing. You again. Shut up. Uh. No, she doesn't say. Well, that's unfortunate. Maybe her sister can tell us. Glad to see you again. Let's have a look. No, nothing, nothing. No, no. All right. Oh, we haven't seen Sean since we, uh, you know, vamped him. I'm sure he'll. I'm sure he appreciates what we did for him. Hello. Welcome back to my humble shelter, Doctor Reed. Are you here to subdue me again? No, Sean. I just came by to see how you are. I feel all right. Why do you ask? Are you still feeding on corpses? No. It's almost as though the blood you forced me to drink has provided me eternal satisfaction. Well, that's good. And slightly... suspicious. Farewell, Sean. Well, alright, Sean. Just don't do anything dumb. Oh, oh, hello. I need to... Where can I do this one? In the office? Where can I listen to this one? Because there's something going on when this happens. I need to know where I can stand to listen to her. Okay. Investigate citizen actions. Yeah, I want to. I'm just not sure where I can stand to listen to her. Okay, Lottie's hiding something. That's what that means. But I don't quite know where I needed to stand there. Ah! Aha! This is where I need to stand. Though it doesn't seem Lottie's coming this way. She might be now, though. Yeah, so we might be able to wait until Lottie goes up, goes around, and we can stand up here and wait for her. Ah, good. You guys like waiting, right? We can talk things. We can talk about blood, spider stories, you know, many things. Well, I'm not sure we have time for everything, of course. Though while we're waiting for Lottie, we need to. All we need to do now, once I've once Lottie. That Giselle's got one as well. Interesting. So whose spooky thing have we got to stand here for, I wonder? Because hmm. I would have guessed they go over here to have a like a private discussion or something. Yeah. It's they must go in here at some point to have a private discussion. But at least not right now. Glad. I got nothing I can ask. Have I got nothing I can ask her that will force this at the moment. Good. That's almost certainly it. They must go and have a discussion in that room, but I don't know when that happens. Hmm. I'll look that up in a minute. Uh, first of all, we're going to find Rodney. Then I will look that up and I will do some fast forwarding editing. I will probably have edited that last little bit out actually. Oh, ratties. I actually need these. <laughs> Thank you. I have this. Right, yeah, you have the thirst for blood, I know. Everyone knows you have the thirst for blood, Jonathan. Including me. So we need to go find Rodney. Who is not too far from here. Oh, it's so slow. There we go. That's really interesting. I've never seen Lottie's uh, thing glow like that before. So I'm deeply curious to see what that means. So I will find out after we after we sort of deal with this problem. Enter at your own risk. The vampire hunters will never find us here. Well, you better hope they don't. 
Right, I'm pretty sure. Ah, I have to go down the other side for this. Whoops. I think we go over here. And then we go down the steps over here. This is the route we didn't take, I believe. When I, I meant to, then forgot. And we'll find a gentleman down here. I'm not quite sure how he got here either, but... Hello, Rodney. Rodney, it's kind of nasty down here. You're right, dude. Rodney, you're the man who killed that gang member, are you not? Is that why you are hiding this is from in this the godforsaken place? Yes, I did. I did not even know his name. Then why did you kill him? That arsehole always mocked me for the color of my skin. Usually I let it go. But not that night. We fought. He died. You can't stay here forever, Rodney. Whatever Sewer. you've done, you can't spend the rest of your life hiding here. I just wanted to teach him a lesson. Not kill him. I'm not responsible for a murder if I didn't want to commit it. It was an accident. Believe me, Rodney, you won't survive here long. No matter what you did, you must go back to where you used to live. I'll go back to the docks then. But if I die, remember that the blood of Rodney Grader will be on your hands. Yeah, sure, Rodney. God, he's so dramatic. Now, what's over here? I think this just opens up a an alternate exit to the sewers. Yeah, this I is- I cannot enter. Oh, really? I can't actually go that way. Right. Okie dokie. Then what I'm going to do is scoot scoot my way back to um, the two girls and find out what the event is with those two. So give me two secs and I'll find out. Right, I just had a nosy. To actually get them to do the things you want them to do, you got to get uh, other hints first, uh, including a burnt letter and something by her bed and stuff. So I will probably... I'm not too worried about that. It's not affecting what I expected it to affect. Though it would be nice if we could see what they were chatting about. Now, what I did find out was how the quest works for um, Giselle. It's some of the vampire hunters, uh, vamp the, the um, Prywin on the pier. We actually killed them previously, but we might as well go back and give them another slap, you know? Now, this doesn't make much sense, because I've edited out a little bit of waiting I did upstairs in Sean Hampton's... Um, watch, I don't know what, what it's you want. It's locked. Yeah, I know it's locked. I don't know what you want to call it. The shelter? Yeah, the nice shelter. So, I don't know if this is... Ah, that's what we're looking for. One of the hints is in here. In. The burnt letter. Miss Paxton, I heard recently that... I heard that Hampton shelter for months and money of support of any kind. Without a false answer, you may be... My, boo my boys always get what they want, except no for an answer. She's getting threatened, it looks like, by the wet boot boys, which isn't very nice. Lottie's always refused to help the wet boot boys, despite their threats. That's because Lottie's an absolutely lovely lady. Uh, oh, wait a second, we haven't looted over here. Oh, that's Sean, I wonder who the hell that was there, isn't it? Uh, kind of interest, Does, is there anything around the back here? I did check it before, didn't I? Now. Uh, Just checking to make sure I didn't miss anything. It doesn't look like it. Is there anything over this side? Boxes, boxes. Nothing that interesting to look at. It. No, no, just bits of bobs. All right, let's go get the guys on the pier quickly, because honestly, I feel kind of bad, and I want you know, Giselle's a bit of a jerk, but Lottie's lovely, and if it helps both of them out, she what she likes her sister, you know. So, so we're heading sort of to the end of the pier here. Which is obviously not too far to go. Alright, dude. Yeah, it's one of them. Oh, I died. That's a little bit awkward. Right, let's uh, let's give the old shadow power to that guy. My name's Shadow Man. I'm Mike Leroux today. Right, so let's just eat this guy because I'm in desperate need of some HP. I mean, I could just heal, but where's the fun in that? Right, they're all dead. Jolly good. Let's just heal. Oh, they all died in the spot. Isn't that handy? Right. Uh, the pier is just over here. Though, there are some more... Dude, ah, here we go. What do you mean, one of them vermin? We discussed this... Oh, you know what? You guys aren't worth the effort. I t tell you time and time again, I'm not a vermin. I'm a, I have a doctorate, and you can't have Dr. Rat. It doesn't make any sense. Right, is this the only guy? 
That was awkward. Right. Here we go. Right, you. Mr. Low Level. And you, Mr. Low Level. Chomp, 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 chomp. Ow. Yeah, seriously, I'm better than you, and I have the powers of vampirism on my side. You have a big coat. Giselle's stolen money. Everyone has some unethical ways of financing their war. Indeed they do. Now then, let's go see the lovely grumpy lady and give her her money back, which might make her slightly less grumpy and potentially trust us a little bit more too. Uh, not that I know where I am. Ah. Oh, I'm just around the back. Okay. Where are they? There she is. Hello. You again. Yeah, I know. I've identified the men who stole from you. You were right. They were members of some self-proclaimed militia. I knew it. Did you find the money too? I certainly did. Yes. Here it is. They thought they could finance their activities with it. I never thought a man like you would be kind enough to... I misjudged you. Badly. Um... I'm... Well... Thank you, sir. Will you give the money back to your comrades, then? Fuck those bastards who fired me. I'll give the money to Miss Gillingham. Her son Jack was a friend of mine. He was killed recently. Aw, that's actually quite nice. You're alright, Giselle. You just got a bit of a hard exterior. Well, I'll leave you for now. Goodbye, Miss Paxton. I wonder if she actually says something a bit nicer now we talk to her. Hold on. You again. I guess not. Well, <laughs> well that was too much to ask for. Either way, we'll uh, come back and see Lossie and uh, them a little bit later to see how they're doing. Right, last thing to do then. On our way back, let's go say hello to Tom. Oh, no, no. Two things to do. Oh, can I do that closer to Tom? No, we'll do that close to the top. I was going to scoot into a, uh... I was going to scoot, scoot my way into, um... One of the base, uh, one of the hideouts, but don't need to, really. Right, that's where I'm going, so let's go this way. Uh, this is the door. <laughs> Sorry, I've probably over, I've overshot this. Actually, no, I cut a little bit out, so it should be alright, actually. Hello, whatever your name is. Archer. Dude. Man bloke. Uh... Into the bar we go. Let's have a quick word with Tom and tell him we know he's a criminal. You know, should all be fine. Welcome back, Doctor. What can I do oh for you? Oh my god, Tom, what's happened to your face? You lied to me, Tom. Your warehouse wasn't empty. It was inhabited with armed vigilantes. I'm sorry, Doctor Reed, but I thought those pre one guards would be willing to let someone like you pass without trouble. That was devious of you, Tom. Next time you can bloody well go yourself. I apologize, Doctor. But it it's just that I prefer to avoid the law, its enforcers, and all manner of thugs in uniform. Is that because, uh, well, you know, you had a bit of trouble with the law? Tom, Tom, you look really weird without your eyebrows. Here is your booze. I hope it will appease your customers. Just try not to kill anyone with this poison of yours. <laughs> Believe me, Doctor, most of my customers are less agreeable when sober. And there we go. We can ask him a personal question such as his arrest for attempted murder, details about the attempted murder, starting a new life after prison, and Sabrina Brit Oh, we already did that one. So let's do that one quickly, because we've done that one previously. Um, are we going to ask Tom about this? I think we should probably ask about the details of the attempted murder. You attempted murder. Give me some details. I was given an order. An order to kill. I was an obedient gang member at the time. A proud, wet boot boy. You were ordered to kill? So you were ordered to kill someone. What happened then? I don't know if you can possibly understand, but... I couldn't kill him. I just stood there, pointing my gun. Someone saw me. I gave up. Why couldn't you shoot? My target was eating in that fancy restaurant with mirrors and music. He was eating, drinking, laughing. He was having such a good time. I hated him for his bottomless appetite, an easy life of easy pickings. And then something happened. You empathize with him. You refused to kill him because you wanted to feel some of that happiness yourself. You empathized with him. Exactly. 
The man was a bloody landlord who rented overpriced flats. A selfish bastard. But he made me smile. And I was no different from him. Why did you join the gang? Because I finally felt useful. Do you have any idea what it means to feel respected when the rest of the world shits on you? No, but, uh, still. Tell me about your arrest for attempting to We just kind of went through this. Tom. I tried to kill someone. I got arrested. I paid my debt and I had nothing to hide. Uh, we just kind of asked him about this. I feel a bit bad to shit on him again. Oh, well, this. Why not leave town? start a new life after you got out of jail. I grew up in the East End. This is where my roots are. This is where I want to help others and die eventually. Well, good for you. Do you think the docks will always be a hive of scum and villainy? We... As long as poverty and fear run the show, I don't see how it would change. Misery loves company, as they say. Tom's all right, to be honest. Don't you feel threatened? Staying in such a violent and criminal neighborhood. I've made peace with my violent past, Dr. Reed. I may not be a pacifist, but I'm not angry anymore. Tom's alright, and we've we've kind of got all the hint. Oh, we got one hint we haven't quite got there, but uh, still. Good old Tom. Wow, Tom looks weird in that picture. Well, he looks less weird than when... Oh, right! Ah! I forgot something! I forgot Good something! Ah, quick! Enid! She has a headache! Ah! Quick, we must go and find Enid quickly, and then we'll end the set. So I'm gonna say quickly. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the set. Uh, it's been fun just pottering around doing side quests. We obviously not really got anything done in the main story, which is uh, a bit of a shame. But uh, eh, quickly, but at the same time, we have really achieved quite a lot for the people of London, which is kind of nice, really. Enid, Enid, where are you? I'm completely lost. Where the hell am I? Enid. This is the night shelter area, so Enid should be just over here in this bit. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, we've done a lot of good work for a lot of good people here, which is kind of nice. And I, I appreciate that. Good Enid, evening. let me in. <laughs> right. And let's go quickly give her her headache medicine thing. Enid, Enid, you're not feeling well, obviously. So, Dr. Do you require medical attention, miss? I'm glad you asked, Dr. Tippett's. I must confess, I haven't felt that well of late. Luckily, I've got some headache medicine for you. I'll try my best. Here, take this. And please, try to get some rest. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'd have felt terrible if I ended the set without uh, healing uh, Enid. Right. One last thing to do. Uh, right, because this is what I was going to do. But we need to find... Uh, it should be to our right, I believe, down here. And then take a left past the gate, I think. If I've done this right, which I might not have done. No, I haven't. I've gone the wrong way. Uh, there should be a gate somewhere. Ah, it's to my right here? Yeah, I just overshot. There's a hideout here, because I want to see if I can upgrade my weapons, because I've actually bought a few bits, haven't I, from the vendors. There's a couple of vendors we can't get to yet, and there's one. There's a vendor, obviously, in um, Whitechapel I didn't go to. But for the most part, we should... Uh, where's the crafting table? Should... Uh, let's see, be able to sort my cudgel out? Yeah, lovely, let's check it out. We're going to get a remarkable barbed cudgel. And we're going to do extra damage. Well, decrease damage? Nah, let's, let's, let's just beat people. 10% damage is actually pretty good. The last one is decrease stamina or more stun points. Stun, stun being quite good. Uh, I don't think we can do anything else yet. Nope. I don't think we've got any tiny bits yet. We need one more tiny handle part. And the gun, of course. Oh, we can actually make a, a remarkable... We can actually... Look at this! We can make a perfect revolver. Damn, look at that. I don't have the rivets to actually increase the uh, damage or anything, but not bad at all. 184 damage per shot is actually pretty bow. Lovely. There we go, that was worth it. Alright, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this set of Vampire. Next time, we are going to uh, actually, you know, do what we were supposed to do. And go and see Lady Ashbury in the West End. Because I think, for the most part, we are done here, aren't we? Yep, look at that. We are done on that. We are done on that. We are done on that. Perfect. Isn't that nice? Jolly good. Cheers, everybody. Catch you all later.